Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. So as you can tell by the title and as you can maybe see from the setup of today's video, we are going to do some decluttering. I am going to do kind of like a final declutter for my cheek products. I did a blush declutter as well as a highlighter declutter in April and I was able to let go of some things I really didn't enjoy and some things I really didn't feel I need in my collection. But for the past couple of months, I have had a feeling that I have too much of products that I simply don't enjoy. If you have been watching my channel, you probably know that my goal is to have more curated collection. That doesn't mean I never again want to buy a blush or a highlighter. I think next year, I haven't fully decided yet, but I think I'm going to allow myself to purchase two of each. So two blushes and two highlighters. But we'll see, it's still a long way to next year. But I want to have a smaller collection. But then, as you know, I am a project panner and the panner in me is sometimes saying that you can pan it, don't declutter it, you can use it up. But realistically, I do have so much blushes and highlighters here and even bronzers that it's not possible for me to finish up everything I have before the products start going bad. I have my oldest products here from 2015 and yes, I can see with some of them that they are going drier and they are not as nice as they used to be. Another thing is that I really don't enjoy panning cheek products, especially blushes. I I absolutely hate panning blushes and I had to learn it the hard way. I tried to do a panted face palette this year and it was just like so much struggle. Bronzer is something I still can pan because you know it looks the same every single day and I tend to wear the same bronzer every day anyway so that's not a problem. Highlighter maybe if it is a highlighter that I feel goes with many different looks. I need to kind of like stop feeling guilty if I want to let something go. Life is too short to wear makeup that you don't enjoy. So if I don't like something here, it's going to go. One thing I want to show you before we get to the business is this one over here. This is a magnetic palette from Tarte and it is really beautiful. It is really sturdy and really kind of like luxurious feeling. It has a nice size mirror in it. I do have here all of my depotted face products. I know I'm going to do some decluttering from here, but I know that there are a couple of face palettes that I am going to depot. And I need to fit all of my depotted cheek products in this palette. If it seems that it's going to go too full, then I just need to be really ruthless and decide what I like the least and declutter that. Okay, so let's start with my bronzers and contouring products. I do have seven all together and six of them are powder products and I do have here one cream product. So let's actually take that one out of the way. This is the only cream product today. I don't have cream highlighters or cream blushes, but I do have this e.l.f. cream contour palette. I have told this before, but I will never again buy face palettes. The problem for me with face palettes is that there is always at least one thing that I just cannot use, whether it is the wrong color or then I just dislike the product so much. But usually what happens for me with these products is that there is like one thing that I truly like and then the rest of the palette I'm just keeping because, you know, I want to keep the one product. From this palette, I think I can use half of the shades. So this contouring shade over here is actually a really nice contour on me. This shade over here is like something I can use as a cream bronzer during summertime when I have some tan. This one over here is way too deep for me no matter what. And this one, I don't like these highlighters, these cream highlighters. First of all, I think during winter this might be too yellow, but during summertime when I think the shade might work better, there is no way that I am going to highlight my face with something this creamy, because the places that I would highlight 
those places are where I do get the most oily, so this would just look like a mess. But I am going to keep this palette for now, because I have gotten it, and I feel a cream palette like this is something I don't feel really comfortable giving anyone else. I do want to get some more use out of those shades that I can get use out of, but I am not going to buy face palettes ever again. Okay, so the rest of the products are actually powder bronzers. Three of them are matte, three of them are more or less simmery, and I know already what I'm going to do with these. I'm going to keep everything else except for these two that are depotted. I don't want to this palette anything but blushes and highlighters. I don't want bronzers here. And another reason why I don't want to keep these two are that I do have similar enough things in these single compacts. So let's go through this quickly. And let's actually start with these two, because they are so close to each other. They are actually both from the Balm. So this is the Balm Bahama Mama bronzer, and it is the perfect contouring shade for me. It is this more cool toned brown contour. It is completely matte. I have had it for a really long time. I got it in 2015 and this is one of those products where unfortunately I know that it's a little bit drier now. It still works, but it may be a little bit patchier and it's not as creamy as it used to be, but it still works. So I will maybe try to pan it next year. And there it is swatched. So this one is also from the Balm. It is depotted from the Balm. Balm Voyage 2 eyeshadow palette. It's really similar. Maybe the undertone of this is just slightest bit more kind of like red, but they are so close that you cannot even tell the difference. I don't need two things that are so similar and I rather want to keep Bahama Mama because it is in packaging that I like more. Then this is the last matte bronzer I have. It is the Essence Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder for lighter skin. It is really light and it almost looks like orange in the pan and even when swatched, but when I apply it to my skin, it looks really, really beautiful. However, I don't know if I need something like this in the future. I think I'm fine with only one bronzer for my winter skin and one bronzer for my summer skin. And I like my bronzer to have a little bit of shimmer in it, but I think I do want to pan this. As you can see, I have gotten a lot of use out of this. I think this is something I will try to pan, but now I think it's still tiniest bit too light for me. So when my skin gets just a little bit lighter from what it is right now, I think I might start working on this one. Okay, then these bronzers are more shimmery. This one is the Essence Luminous Matte Bronzing Powder. It's actually not that shiny. It's like a shadow sheen that it has. And this is new. I got it from Nella, who is a subscriber and a Finnish beauty blogger. She had two of these and wanted to give one of these for me. And I'm really grateful of that. I think this will be absolutely beautiful on winter. But as you can see, it is now almost like lighter than my skin tone. I have gotten some tan this summer. Not like a deep tan, but some, so no way I can wear this now. But I cannot wait to be in my palest and try this one out. I'm sure I will love it, so of course I'm going to keep this. These two I find are pretty similar. So this one I am going to declutter. It is the Depotted Bronzer from the Pacifica Solar Palette. And it is this neutral bronzer. I actually do really much like the color. It has a sheen in it, but it's not like crazy shimmery. Looks really beautiful. But my biggest issue with this one is that it's such a small pan and I like to apply bronzer with a large brush, a large fluffy brush. And this one is just really difficult to pick to that kind of brush. This is the Too Faced Sweetheart Bronzer. This one is something I cannot wear except during summertime. I actually did try this yesterday and I need to be really, really light-handed even now when I apply this, but the color is beautiful. I just need light hand. And as you can see, these are pretty similar. So I don't need both of these and I am going to keep the Too Faced one. I like the packaging more. I think the packaging is cute, but in future, 
I will say I don't want to buy products that are in this bulky packaging. Okay, so from my seven bronzers and contouring products, I decided to keep five and declutter two. So that means that I decluttered roughly 29% these that I decided to keep. All of them are staples in my collection, except for this one that I'm planning on panning. But for me, staples that I want to have are a cream contour product, a powder contour product, and then a lighter, slightly shimmery bronzer and a deeper shimmery bronzer. Okay, so these are all of my blushes. And this one I want to mention first, because you already saw this one in my July's empties video. I told that I am going to declutter the palette, so it is the Pure 4-in-1 blush book. So it is a palette with four blushes. The reason I wanted to declutter this is that half of the palette is just 2D for me and completely useless for me. However, I have not found a home for this palette yet. Because of that, and because there are a couple of blushes that I actually do want to keep from this palette, or at least one, I'm going to pull this pack in for this declutter and I'm going to keep from here what I really really like. The one blush that I really wanted to keep from this palette is this one over here. So my logic was that I'm going to declutter this palette now, give it for someone else and then next year after my no buy year I'm going to, you know, purchase a similar blush than this one, but I don't think it makes any sense if I have already this in my collection. Yeah, I'm going to keep from this palette the things that I really do like, and they are going to go to my Facey palette. Okay, so I do have now right here all of my pinks and berries, and then the peachy, orangey and neutral blushes are here, so let's go through them later, but first let's start with this. As I said, I do want to keep this blush. This is the Said Honest from the Pure palette, and as you can see, these blushes have different colors in them, so depending where you concentrate your brush, the color will be different. I know some people don't like it at all. I don't mind it that much. It depends how easy it is to get similar color, but I don't think it's difficult to concentrate to this lighter part or to this deeper part. So this one, if you are going to focus your brush to the lighter side, it is going to be this kind of like warmer natural type of pink. And that is a blush I want to have in my collection, but that I don't have other than in this palette. So that is the reason I want to keep this blush. But then if I concentrate my brush to the darker side of the blush, then it's going to be like this rosy color. So basically there are now two different blush colors in this one blush. This one is the Catherine Multi Matte Blush in the shade Love Rosy. And as you can see, it is really light. It is actually the palest blush in my collection. And when I am my very palest, it looks really pretty on my skin, but I cannot wear it other than that. Like right now, I couldn't get it to show up on my face. So there it is. It is actually quite similar in tone to the lighter shade of the Pure Blush. I don't necessarily need this because I think I can get similar tone from the Pure Palette. However, I think right now is not the right time to make the decision of this one because it has been months since I have worn this. So I think that when I am my palest, I need to try this again, wear it for a couple of times, wear it with different looks and then make the decision. So I'm going to come back to this blush during winter time, but right now I am going to hang on to it. Next I want to mention this one. It is a depotted plus from my Panted Face palette. So I was panning the Viva La Diva Dream Cheek Plus and Highlighter palette that came with four blushes. I do have three of them still in my collection depotted and then it came with two highlighters that I don't have anymore. So this is the blush Sunday Walk and I actually do think this is a stunning color. However, I don't really wear it and it is really similar color than the deeper side of the Pure Plus that I decided to keep. So I don't need this. So this one I am going to declutter. Okay, so this one is a depotted plus from the Balm Balm Voyage 2 palette. And this is clearly more cool toned than the 
blush from the Panted Face palette or the blush from the Pure palette. And I actually do really much like this. This one has a beautiful sheen in it. I don't know if the camera picks it up. But this one is different enough so that I actually do want to keep this. Then a blush that I am not going to keep is this one from the Pure palette. So it is the shade Loyal. And as you can see, it is really, really deep. It is beautiful and it will probably look amazing on someone with like medium to deep skin tone but it is really not catered towards fair to light skin tone. Like, what I do like in this palette is that whether you are light skin toned or whether you are deep skin toned, there is going to be something for you. If you don't mind the fact that half of the palette is useless for you, I actually think that someone with medium skin tone could maybe get use out of all of the shades, but if you are fair to light, you probably are going to get more use out of the upper shades and if you are medium to deep or deep I think you can only get use out of the darker shades. There is something for everyone. For me the fact is that half of the palette is useless so that's why I don't like face palettes but then I do realize that some people really enjoy them but they are not for me in the future. But yeah this this blush over here I am not going to keep, however I am going to keep this one, so it is the shade Passionate. So this is a more cool toned pink compared to the one that I already decided to keep, so these two. This is clearly more cool toned. I will say that if I didn't keep the warmer blush from the palette I would not keep this and I would keep this one instead because this is like the same thing, the color is exactly the same. It is a Franken blush, so I franken here the actual blush that was from my Pantat Face palette. It was called Spring Break and it was like a pale matte pink and then I did put here the pink eyeshadow from my Baby Pantat palette. So to be honest, I'm a little bit guilty of decluttering this one. So the project pattern in me is now telling that I should keep this one because there is the eyeshadow from my baby banded palette and that I should use it up, but I think that's a wrong reason for me to keep a product. I don't know, I do like this pure blush more, these pure blushes, they are so smooth and so buttery, so blendable, so now that I'm keeping the warm blush, I do want to keep this one rather than this one, because this one, the blush is anyways old. Okay, then let's go through the peachy and orangey blushes, so I do have them over here, I do have five of them. Uh, well, first, this one is again from the Pure palette, and I'm going to declutter it, it looks really stunning, it's super super metallic but honestly on my skin tone this one looks like an eyeshadow rather than a blush. It is stunning but I think this one would look way better on someone who has deeper skin tone. This one however I am definitely going to keep. So it is the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso and this I think is a cult classic for a reason. I must say that I have had other of these Milani Baked blushes and I don't think the formula is consistent. Luminoso is super beautiful, it has a stunning sheen in it, but some of the blushes from the line have been way more glittery and even like more kind of like sheer. This one I'm absolutely going to keep, it is so beautiful and I think this is a blush that works for me no matter if I am my palest or if I have tan, so I'm for sure going to keep this. And I am going to keep this one, so this is the Essence Matte Touch Plus in the shade Peach Me Up, and this is actually in color really really similar to Luminoso. They are like the same color, but one is matte and one is shimmery. And I don't think I really need both of these, but I do like both of these and I do wear both of these, so I don't mind if I am now keeping them both. This one, however, I am going to declutter. Those Essence Matte Touch Pluses, they are really smooth and really pigmented, really blendable. This is the Catrice Blush Box and I don't think this is as nice of a formula. So this is in the set Golden Coral and it is a matte blush. In tone this is quite close to the Essence Plus but it is a little bit deeper, a little bit more orangey. It swatches more poorly and if I, you know, want to have a proper swatch I need to build it up. 
and of course swatching doesn't always tell how the product applies but it's similar when you try to apply it to your face it applies kind of like sheer and it may be a little bit patchy and you will need to build it up so unfortunately i don't think the formula is as good if it was better formula i might keep it because in my opinion it is different enough to the essence blush this is more kind of like orange but yeah I'm a little bit disappointed with the formula, so I'm not going to keep it. And the last peachy plus I have is this one. It is also depotted from the Balm Balm Voyage 2 eyeshadow palette. This one I think has a little bit more kind of like a pinky shift to it. So it's maybe a little bit more like a coral type of blush than the Essence Plus that I decided to keep. So I actually do really like this and I have been wearing this. I have been panning one of my coral lipsticks and this goes so beautifully with that. So I'm going to keep this. I actually do really enjoy it. Okay, then from the blushes, we only have the neutral blushes left. And this is now going to be a little bit boring, but I am pretty sure that I'm not going to declutter any of this. If you have ever heard me to talk about blush, you know that neutral blushes are my gem. I think they go with so many different looks and you know for me blush is many times something that I just want it to kind of like blend to the look. Like I either want it to match the rest of my makeup, like to match my eyeshadow or my lipstick or then I just want it to be something really kind of like neutral and I don't want it to be the star of the show. So I love neutral blushes, there is a reason I have so many of them, but let's go through these blushes. Uh, if I would declutter any, I would declutter this one. It is a blush from my Pandot Face Palette again. As you can see, I have gotten a lot to use out of it. This one, I think it's, it's more difficult to swatch right now. It's a little bit drier what it used to be, there is less product and it's like really, really difficult to pick to a brush however the pan is small the color is really beautiful so i think i'm going to finish this one up but i need to repress it because it's really difficult to pick to a brush anymore but for now it's staying in my collection and i'm going to throw it to some project pan later i find that this blush is actually quite similar to the previous blush so this is too pretty matte it is supposed to be like a blush that has a blush side and a highlight side and I don't know if the highlight side is supposed to be shimmery but it's not. This blush is actually really matte and the way I like to use it is that I swirl my brush just like all over the product and it is really really similar to the previous blush and the previous blush I'm planning on panning and then I will have this one. I just think this kind of blush color goes with any look. I prefer shimmery blushes overall. I do like when they give little glow to my skin, but sometimes I may feel that Shimmery Plus is a little bit too much and then if I want to just like beautiful neutral blush that kind of like blends into the look, this one is stunning. So I'm going to keep this. Oh, and by the way, it is the Catrice Light and Shadow Blush in the shade Bronze Me Up Scotty. I'm pretty sure these are now discontinued. But and then this is my last matte neutral blush. It is the Essence Mattach Plus in the set Rose Me Up and this is the most neutral blush I have in my collection. It is like just beige. It does not have any red in it. It is really really kind of like beige, looks like nothing. But I think this is a perfect blush to neutral looks. Like if I'm doing for example top looks that I have been doing recently because I'm trying to pan a top eyeshadow. This is a blush that I'm most often going for because I just think the neutral wipe of it goes so well with the tones of the looks. So I actually do really much love this blush and I'm going to keep it. Okay, then the rest of these blushes are more or less shimmery. This one is one of my favorite blushes. It's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in Mood Espasur. And I think these are so raved about for a reason. And I don't know if the camera picks it up, but I have like hit... Like, it's not pan, but you know, these products don't have pan. They just have the weird, weird thing in the bottoms. This is so beautiful blush. 
it's a little bit more cooler toned neutral type of blush like it does have some mauveness and plumness to it i love this so i'm going to keep this this one over here is the essence satin touch plus in satin love and i love this blush too this one has just a little bit pink in it and i don't know it's just so so stunning if i didn't know better i could you know say that this is a 30 euro blush but actually it cost about 3 euros for me it is stunning okay so this one over here is the elf baked plus in the city rich rose if i had to name one plus from my collection that is my absolute favorite it might be this one this is again really really neutral i think this is more neutral than the previous ones when the hourglass one has some plum in it or some mauveness to it and the essence blush has almost like a peachy pink shift to it this one is just like brown but it does have the most perfect undertone this is something i could wear on any look no matter if that look is neutral warm or cool toned i could get this one to work and it does have the most amazing sheen to it one thing i must say though is that elf as well as essence make the worst packaging like as you can see i have had my packaging broken with so many of these blushes if you are looking for like a luxury packaging unfortunately these brands are not going to offer that but the product inside is just so amazing okay these two i think are more bolder blushes in my neutral blush color family this one actually i don't even know if it's that neutral this is a depotted blush from my pacifica solar palette sorry by the way about the lighting in my hand i will try to find another spot to film when we have gone through these blushes i'm filming in the morning and the morning sun is now like starting to shine directly from the windows i do have my blinds closed but anyways let's quickly go through these two blushes so this one is this neutral blush with some red in it. It's really interesting. This is definitely something I would wear more during summer and fall time. It's a little bit deeper, but I think it's gorgeous. And I'm going to keep it. It's really unique to my collection too, I think. And finally, this is the Milani Baked Blush in the set Bellissimo Bronze. This is the last blush I have purchased. Actually, it was in the very end of last year. And this wasn't quite what I wanted it to be. Like, I did finish completely the Essence Silky Touch Plus in Natural Beauty. And I would have repurchased the blush if it wasn't discontinued. Unfortunately, Essence and Catrice as well, they both do discontinue their stuff so often that, you know, many times if you find a favorite, you cannot even, you know, replace it when you finish it up. So I was looking for a blush like that, but this one is just like clearly more bronzy and orangey. So what is actually lacking from my neutral blush collection is a neutral warm blush that is like really warm, but not orangey. This one I think pulls quite orangey, but you know, it is a nice plus to looks where I'm going for that really warm type of vibe. So I am going to keep this. Okay, so this is the overall look for my blush declutter results. So I had 20 blushes before the declutter, including all of the pans in the pure blush palette and I decided to keep 15 and declutter 5 blushes so I actually decluttered 25% so I'm really really excited I'm glad to see my inventory numbers go down all of the blushes I decided to declutter I don't just need and want so I'm really happy with the result of this one okay then last but not least we do have the highlighters left as you can see i don't have that many kind of like single highlighters in compact i do have only two even though in future they are what i'm going to buy then i do have some depotted stuff and i am counting all of the highlighters in my palettes so let's actually very first address my bh cosmetics carly bible deluxe edition eyeshadow palette so there are six highlighters in here and i do count to my highlighter inventory or to collection all of the pans of highlighter that i have in my collection and i actually asked 
from you what should I do with the deeper highlighters in this palette that I simply cannot highlight with and you said that I shouldn't count them to my inventory and I kind of agree and you know what I have decided to do with these two that are too deep I'm just going to you know crush them and remove them from this palette I feel if I keep them here I need to count them to my inventory but I don't want to keep them because I only can wear them as eyeshadows and I do have plenty of eyeshadows in these colors that I rather would work on than these so yeah these two are going to go. I do love that Carly included every skin tone to this palette and to highlighters, but I just don't feel I need to keep something that I cannot even highlight with. So from this palette I'm going to declutter two highlighters. The rest I'm going to keep. This one is one of my favorites. It is this warmer toned pink highlighter. It is so natural. I think Many times pink highlighters may kind of like clash with my skin tone, but this one doesn't. It's just stunning. Then there is this gold over here. As you can see, there is huge pan. It is in a project right now and I have also worn it as an eyeshadow. This is something I can wear on my face only when I do have tan, but it is really, really beautiful. Then there is this white. It's also in project. I will try to finish it next winter really beautiful blinding white it is so so frosty but it's pretty but definitely something i would only wear during winter time okay then this one over here is one of those kind of like lilac duochrome shades i don't really like this i don't wear this However, I am going to keep it for now because I do have it in the palette. If one day I want to wear a duochrome lilac highlighter, I will have one in my collection in this palette, but I would not buy something like this again. But because I already have it, I maybe feel twice a year that I want to wear this kind of thing. I'm going to keep it for now. Okay, I'm going to mention this palette right now because this is one of the few face palettes where I like everything or at least almost everything. This is the Ofra Glow Up palette. So I'm going to keep the entire palette. So this is how it looks like. The only shade that I am not crazy about is Beverly Hills over here. If I just swirl my finger all around the thing and swatch it it's like a pretty kind of like rose goldy color. So you can focus your brush to this part and you will get like more cooler toned lilac -y effect. Or if you focus your brush to this part, you can get like a golden bronzy color. Or here you can get like a peachy color. The other three highlighters I absolutely love. So there is Star Island that is like a really pale yellow gold and then there is a blissful that is like a rose gold and then rodeo tribe which is called classic for a reason in my opinion it is the most perfect gold highlighter i have ever seen so i absolutely do love this palette i think the formula is so blinding i love all of these and if i would finish up any of these three i would purchase it in a single compact but let me show you swatches of these so this one is Starry Island. It's maybe my least favorite because it's so pale that I can only pull it off when I am my very palest or then just layer it a little bit with something deeper. But it's pretty. It's just something I don't go for that often. And then this one is Blissful. Absolutely perfect rose gold. And Rodeo Drive, which is the perfect gold. Okay, so let's address this palette next. I mentioned it in my last highlighter declutter video that I did in April that if I would depot this I would probably keep only one or two highlights from this palette but I did keep the entire palette because I just wasn't ready to you know destroy the palette and then only kind of like keep the cherries or how do you say it and then get rid of the rest of the palette but I'm going to do it now because I just I don't want to keep this entire palette. I don't like all of the highlighters. In fact, there is really only one highlighter that I do want to keep and it is this one over here, Dream. As you can see, I have hit pan. This color is an exact dupe for the Becca Champagne Pop. I had Champagne Pop and I gave it to my sister once I got this palette. 
because this palette is vegan and champagne pop is not. So this is this kind of like warm, a little bit orangey golden champagne color. This is one of those highlighters that I can only wear during summertime. So when I am my palest, there is no way I can pull this off. But I want to hold on to a couple of summer highlighters. No more than couple, but this is for sure one of those that I do want to keep. However, the rest of the palette I'm not going to keep. So I'm just going to be ruthless. I'm going to destroy the palette and keep only this one. But let me go through this rest of the colors really quickly. Ethereal over here has some pan in it. I have used it, but I think the reason why it has pan is more because it's kind of like so powdery and flaky type of color. So this is actually pretty. It is like a white base with peachy shift to it, so it's like a duochrome. But I don't know, I think it's kind of like chalky looking when I apply it to my face. Radiance over here is too deep for me. Like, no way I can wear it as a highlighter really ever. This shade glow over here is yellow gold and it is exactly the same color than the Star Island from the Ofra palette that I decided to keep. I will actually swatch them side by side. I don't wear this kind of highlighter that often. I can only pull it off when I am my very palest, so I don't need both of them. This one is the BH Cosmetics one. And this one is the Ofra one. Okay, then this one, Allure and Vivid, are both like cooler toned, almost lilac -y pinks. And they look nice in the pan. And sometimes I am in a mood of wearing these type of highlighters. But what happens then most of the times is that I feel the highlighter is just too cool toned and it clashes with my skin tone. Most of the times I think it's a great idea to apply a highlighter like this until I actually get it to my face and realize that it's just so unnatural looking. And you know what? In the Ofra Beverly Hills highlighter, if I happen to be in a mood for a cooler toned lilac -y highlighter, I can just focus my brush to this part here where there is the lilac highlighter and the white highlighter and I will get color that is similar in tone to this from BH Cosmetics that I am going to get rid of. I think this palette is really nice quality. Some of the highlighters here are more powdery, I will say that, but they are super super blinding. But, you know, this is the problem that I have with highlighter or with face palettes really often. There's really only one shade that I like, and I don't want to keep something that takes this much space for only one product. So I'm just going to do it. I'm going to depot it and I'm going to keep the one highlighter that I like. Okay, then we only have my single highlighters left. So I do have this The Balm Mary Luminizer and this one I am panning and it's almost gone. It should be gone this year, probably in a couple of months. This is just the perfect little bit warmer champagne color highlighter. This one I am going to keep. It is a depotted highlighter from the Balm Balm Voyage 2 palette and it is actually really really similar to the Mary Luminizer. Maybe this one is just a little bit lighter but on face they look the same. And once I have panned Mary Luminizer then I am going to pan this one and then I am going to repurchase the Mary Lou. So this kind of highlighter I can pan that is really something that goes with so many different looks. Like I don't like to wear these with cooler toned looks because these have some warmth to it, but if the look is neutral or if the look is warm, these highlighters will go with it. So yeah, I'm going to keep this and try to pan it once the Mary Lou is gone. This one I know for sure that I'm going to keep. It is a depotted highlighter from the V Care Icon in Love Glow palette. If you have not heard of V Care Icon, it is a Finnish brand sold exclusively in store called Sogos. This one is one of my favorite highlighters. It is this beautiful, more neutral champagne. So if Mary Lou has some warmth to it, this is just like more neutral. It, it doesn't pull pink at all, but it doesn't have that warmth. And that's the reason why this highlighter is my favorite with cooler toned looks. Next, I do have this Essence Pure Nude Highlighter in the set Be My Highlight. This one is a really beautiful, kind of like subtle highlight. 
Unfortunately, this one is something that I can only wear during summertime. The color of this one is just like too deep. As you can see, it's really close match to my skin tone right now. So when I am my palest, it's actually darker than my skin tone. So then I cannot wear this. And I really would love to have this kind of highlighter in color that I could wear all year around. But I am still going to keep this one. It is going to be for me more like a natural type of summer highlighter. This one I am going to declutter. It is a depotted highlighter from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Tat Glow Glow Kit. This one is actually really similar in color to the Essence one that I am going to keep. So as you can see, they are so close. I don't need both of these. So I will rather keep the Essence one that is in a single compact. This one I am going to declutter too. It looks really similar in pan than the previous one. So the previous one was Dripping in Gold. This one is also from the ABH that glow cloak it, but it's the same bubbly. But this one actually is more neutral in tone. So it doesn't have that much warmth to it. It's one of those that I can only wear during summertime. And if I'm going for that neutral champagne highlighter, I will way rather reach for this weaker icon one than this one. So I don't think there is any point for me keeping this. This one is something I am not sure about. This is the last shade from the ABH That Glow Glow Kit. This is the lightest shade from the palette. So it is the one called Sunburst. And this is like a really beautiful yellow, warm yellow gold highlighter. Just for reference, I'm going to swatch the Ofra Star Island next to it. So it is more cool toned and pale. I do think this is like the color of the midday sun. It's just, oh my god, it's so stunning. I think I'm going to keep this one for now. I haven't worn it that much, but I need to do it more often. And as you can see, in my face palette, there is still room for this one. And then there will be room for the, maybe I will need to do some rearranging, but there will be room for the Highlighter from the BH Cosmetics Spotlight Palette. Okay, so before this declutter, I had 23 highlighters. I do have one liquid highlighter that is in a project pan, and I anyways use it as body makeup, not as face highlighter. So I didn't include that, so I had 23 to begin with. And I decided to keep 14 of the highlighters and declutter 9. So that will be... 39% decluttered and I am honestly so so happy about this because highlighter was the one category I felt I need to go through the most because I just wasn't feeling like this entire palette I only wanted the one thing then I knew that I have too much of this too deep for me for the most part of the year highlighters so I'm really, really pleased with this declutter. Like, I'm really happy with everything I have left in my collection. And I feel my collection is now more curated. And I don't have things that I truly don't enjoy. But that was everything for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. And see you in my next one.